Alright, so the effect we're trying to achieve today will require a couple of things. First one will be to be on a um, one of the new pipelines. So either that's be HDRP or the universal rendering pipeline. If you haven't, if you're not on that yet, I could say, uh, then go over to the package manager um, under the Unity registry, and you'll be able to find either the HDRP, which stands for the High Definition Rendering Pipeline, or I am using where is it exactly? Uh, the Universal Rendering Pipeline. So that's the one I'm using. Um, for two reasons. One will need shader graph and second will need the rendering pipeline. So once we have this in the project, we now need to create ourselves a new pipeline asset. So if you go over to edit project settings, you'll find here that um, you don't have a rendering pipeline asset. If that's not done already, if you need one, you can go over to config, um, rendering, universal rendering pipeline, and we'll do a pipeline asset for a forward renderer. That's the most basic one we could do. Um, at least for my game, which is a 3D game. You could use the 2D as well if you wish to have 2D and 2D lightning. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm going to leave it the name it has, and you'll see that it has created two different assets. One for the forward renderer, right here, and one for the pipeline asset in general. We can take the general one and drag it right here, and now our whole game should be using the new rendering pipeline asset, which you can define a couple of things here. If you need to have different um, shadows, like for example, let me open my main scene, we'll be able to have a look. So here you can modify the shadows directly on this. You can modify, um, boop, boop, boop. here, I want to have soft shadows for my game, so I'll click that on. But basically, I'll let you explore this one on your own. Um, but the cool thing is down here, so with the forward renderer, we are telling our game that you're going to be rendering our whole game with the current shader they have right now. So for example, here, this mushroom has this very specific color, that's totally fine. And, and all of that, right? So everything stays the same. And we can say that on top of that, we can target something and render an override on top of it, or we could render additional paths on top of it. And we can do so by doing add render feature or renderer feature. Yeah. And let's do a render objects experimental. Here I'll say highlight. This is my highlight um, override. And here you can decide where it's being rendered. So just imagine that your whole game is being rendered right now, no problem. And then at a certain point, it could be before you render the object, it could be after you render the post processing even. You can do something else. You can um, access the object once again and and render them again on the screen if you wish to. So that's exactly what we'll do. So we'll let the screen render everything it has right now. And then we'll do an event that will render again after rendering all the opaque objects. We can do so by clicking on this. And then the really cool thing here is that we have access to filter, which means we are not going to render everything back. We're just going to choose which one to render. And how now I'll just say everything, right? So we'll just do that on on all the objects right now. I'd like to see something. Um, and we can go under to override and you'll see that we have a material and I just have a dirt material that I'll put here and see what happened. All my object in the scene have changed their material. And you can see that because this object right here has a simple nature pack and it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't have the same color as it does. Like on, on top of the object, it has its own material. We didn't lose any information. It has the own old stuff, you could say. And then um, when we apply the override, we apply it to everything. Therefore, everything got the new material. Now, this is not really useful in this case because not everything is dirt. But if you are to play around with this and now start using the filter, we can say that we're only going to render actors. So actors are objects in my scene that you can interact with. Um, this is a multiplayer game. So these are objects you could interact with. They could disappear. They could do something like that. And as you can see now, I just highlight all of them. Maybe with a different texture, it's going to be easier to tell. So all of these are now highlight. Okay, um, that's cool and all, but that what you saw in the preview wasn't that. So we're going to go work on what you saw in the preview to highlight these objects. To do that, I'm going to create myself a new shader. So I'll go in my shader folder. I'll create a, uh, let's do a blank. I like to start blank and I'll just call it the highlight shader. In here, this is part of the new shader graph. Well, I'm going to say new, but it's I think it's been here for at least 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Um, and in here, I'm going to say I'm going to be rendering for the universal rendering pipeline. And I am going to render something transparent. 
something transparent that has a base color of white and a alpha of 0 0.2. So something very, very subtle. What I'm trying to show right here is that, um, well, first I made my shader right here. Now we need a material on top of that. So I'll go on my, on my material folder. I'll create myself a highlight material. My highlight material, the one I've just created, I'm going to assign it the graph I just created. So shader graph, highlight shader. And then I'll go back on my forward renderer, the rendering pipeline, and I'll assign this material here highlight. What I'm trying to show here by doing that is that these two are being rendered, right? So earlier, we totally overridden the old texture with dirt. But the fact is that we didn't really do that. The old texture was still there, but beneath it. So by playing around with the alpha here, you can tell that the old, the old stuff is there still. So you're not changing the base color of this thing. You're only adding on top of it. For example, here, I have just a tiny little bit of alpha. And if I swap my layers, you'll be able to see it live as it happens. It's very, very subtle, but um, that's what I'm going to be going for, basically. So let's try and make that a little bit more apparent. So maybe 0 0.25. And I think that's enough. We'll see the difference in the game. Now, with this information in mind, you probably already know how to create the effect, but it's very simple. Um, we are going to create a separate layer in which all the objects that are be like that belong to this layer will have this material on top of them. So if I go over to my layer here, I do add layer. I have one already created called highlight. And what's going to happen is instead of saying that I want to render this on top of all the actors, I'm only going to be rendering the one that have the highlight layer. So by doing that, if I, if I remove actor as well, you're going to see that they change completely. And now the only thing I'll have to do in the game is when I target something, I change this layer from actor to highlight, and you'll see that change happening. Now I do have a piece of code that you can have a look at if you wish, which does that very, very uh, simply. I grab a int of both my actor mask and the highlight mask. So here they are. I do that in the awake. Um, and then a little bit later on, I use my camera to do a raycast. So I do a physics raycast with the following layer. So I'm only targeting the one that are either actors or highlight. And then if I don't have a current target, um, but I hit something and I have to hit something that is either an actor or highlight, I set that as my target. And also I change the layer else. Well, I basically drop my target. Uh, if I don't have any anything with the raycast, I drop my target and I put it back on the actor mask, which also put it back on the other color. So if we have a look at that in the game, I have to start from my preloader, unfortunately. If I can type. <laughs> preloader. Okay, sorry about that. Now every actor um, should be spawned when I start the game. Here it is. And also have one more here. As I mouse over, well, actually, as I put my my middle of the screen, this cursor here, as I put it over, you're going to see that it highlights itself. And now this will also work for all the actors, like this tree. As you can see, it's very subtle. So I could make, I could make my um, highlight material a little bit more drastic, you could say. I, you could change the color completely. Initially, what I wanted to do is put um, an outline, and that's exactly what I'll do Eventually, I just have to create a proper high, um, outline shader, which can actually get quite complex. You have a simple one that doesn't really look good that if we create right now, I'll do it because why not? So something like that could do. Uh, I'm just playing around. But basically, if you change around the, the highlight shader here, uh, definitely you're going to get some different results. So let me try that out here. You can end up with something weird like that. So if you wish, that's that's something you can definitely do. And uh, do know that you don't have to go around and apply anything to your objects. Um, the material stays there. And as long as you put something on the right layer, like this one here is on the right layer right now, uh, then this is going to be applied to it. So anything you do in your game, as soon as you put one object on this layer, it's going to run this material on top of it. The material contains the shader. And then, of course, you see the result. Yeah, so something like that, right? And uh, hopefully this was helpful to you. Now remember the powerful thing with this is that you keep the data behind this object. You don't have to create another material with this very specific base texture as a... And you don't have to modify it through script. So basically you keep the texture, you just put another pass on top of it. 
and you do that with descriptable rendering pipelines. So I hope this was helpful to some of you. And if you enjoy, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.